Let us begin our service with a wonderful introit. Um, it's a reminder that today is Palm Sunday, um, and it's called All Hail King Jesus. Thank you.
So we're going to send um, our donation to that. There is a green box, and I know it's there because I put it there. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and uh, so if you'd like just to put a, a little donation, extra donation, that would be gratefully received and sent to a good, uh, worthwhile initiative. I would also uh, like to bring to everybody's attention, um, on April the 1st is uh, Glenda Moore's birthday. And as she's a lady, we won't inquire how many, but she's over 65. Mm -hmm. And so if you get the opportunity to call her or send a card, um, I think their address, is it 75? It's 75 West Main Street. I think it is. I think it is. And if you get the opportunity to send a card, I know she love it. They've had a difficult time recently. Bob was in hospital with pneumonia and some you know, blood infection, but he's, he's, his back hole is in recovery, but it's been quite a difficult time. So it's good, good to celebrate things. And um, anybody I in, um, inadvertently wished happy birthday in the wrong month, I do apologize. <laughs> Uh, because I seem to have got my marches and my maids mixed up. And um, I turned up at Lola's house, who didn't hear this one, uh, with a present, and I said, Happy birthday! And she said, It's not till May. And I said, Well, I might not be here in May, so have it now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I recovered very quickly from the situation. Uh, but apparently, I've done the same to Anthony and various other people. But I do definitely know 100% it is Glenda Moore's birthday on the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, because we often laugh. So uh, that, I now have um, an announcement from Sandy Andrews, who is um, uh, heading the initiative for the community garden. Uh, community garden, Tuesday, March the 30th, 10 to 12 uh, in the morning, and 2 to 4 in the afternoon. If you could come to either of those times, clean up begins for the community garden. Bring your own tools, rakes, pruners, and work gloves. Lots of burdock and thistles. Oh, that sounds challenging. Uh, but what will be provided, I, I, my, my eyes lit on this immediately, they're going to give us not only the lawn and leaf bags, but snacks. I think that's vital. And water bottles. So if you're interested in kind of 10, then uh, Sandy Andrews' telephone number is here. And uh, I will leave this in the narthex if you, um, if you just need to get her telephone number. But she is in the directory. So that's a very worthwhile initiative because as all the gardeners know, now is the time. Uh, that uh, we need to get out in the garden and prepare in the soil. So that is that. Are there any other announcements? All right, I think I've said everything I needed to, to say. Um, we have palms with us this morning that uh, uh, we provide each year. And um, at this moment, I'd like to bless these palms. So let's, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, on Palm Sunday, almost 2,000 <coughs> years ago, Jesus rode into Jer Jerusalem on a donkey, and he was greeted by palms being waved and people shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And this morning, we ask you to bless these palms, that as we take them home with us, may they be a reminder of the beginning of Holy Week, a reminder that Jesus was innocent, a reminder that he was faithful in his obedience to his Heavenly Father, and we ask that we be uh, faithful to him in this holy week. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So uh, David and Carolyn um, will be handing these out at the end of the service. If you have uh, someone you'd like to take one for, please ask for an extra one. As you can see, we have a lot of palms there, so that's not an issue. Um, so let us begin uh, with our opening sentences. God of love and majesty, we come together this morning as a crowd came together in Jerusalem long ago. Blessed is he who crowns in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And our first hymn is in fact called that, Hosanna, loud Hosannas, and we will sit and hum and listen to it. Thank you, Brad.
Uh, two things before we go any further, before we move on to the song. Uh, first of all, um, in our prayer list, we have added in our prayers this morning, we've added uh, Goshen United Methodist Church of Alabama. And this church was totally destroyed by a tornado, um, I think yesterday or the day before. It was also the same church that was totally destroyed by a tornado 28 years ago. And so we can feel for their, their difficulties. But out of that came a wonderful story that Cindy Campbell told me this morning. We had 13 people at the 9 o'clock service. So uh, that was lovely to see. But she told everybody this story. She said that on the day of the tornado, the custodian stayed behind to make sure that everything was prepared as could be. And when they, he knew that the tornado was heading, he, uh, he went to the only room that didn't have windows. And the tor tornado passed through, and the only room that was untouched by the tornado was his. Uh -huh. And he came out to absolute devastation. And he said, you know, I know scientifically I can't prove that God exists, but I know that he was with me. And I thought that was just so lovely, I'm in such devastation. So there's always that hope, that little bit of hope. A little bit like the mustard seed, a little seed of hope for us all. Um, so yes, so let us move on now to the psalm, Psalm 118. And uh, we, as we do in Milford, we say all the words together. Here we go. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. There are joyous songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does sound me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does sound me. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me sorely, but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God who has given us light. Lead the festival procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Quite a few familiar words there in that psalm. We come now to exchange the peace to celebrate that we are here this morning despite the rain that is forecast all day. We came to the right place to be on a Sunday morning, God's house. And as such, I salute you, brothers and sisters in Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share that peace. Yee-haw! <laughs> I'm almost getting to prefer it, but not bad. Um, uh, we move on now to the first of our readings. Uh, the first reading is the New Testament. Scripture from the Book of the Philippians. Thank you. Sorry. Our first reading this morning is from Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Therefore, if you have encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, 
did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you, Terry. Our next hymn is a wonderful lyrical ballad to the Lord. My song is love unknown. no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied in a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So first of all, I need to tell you that I always have a hard time with Palm Sunday. To me, it is almost more heartbreaking than Good Friday. And I'll tell you why. Because it's like, have you ever heard of the tipping point? or a watershed moment where things could be different, but they go another way. Uh, to me, that represents Palm Sunday, that Jesus arrived, everybody greets him, but then within a week, he's dead. And it's such an indictment on humans. Such an indictment. I, I feel my heart break each time I um, preach about it. Uh, but let's, let's follow through that. 
I wanted to say that first, in case you're thinking, well, Fast Estopia is normally a pretty nappy kind of person, but I have a hard time on Palm Sunday, so bear with me on this one. So, my sermon, Hosanna in the Highest Heaven. For the past five weeks, we have been walking towards Jerusalem with Jesus and his disciples through the season of Lent. And today we have arrived at our destination, Jerusalem, the capital city of Israel, the New York City to our Milton. In the three years that Jesus spent as a teacher and a preacher, the number of people who came to hear him talk had increased dramatically. The feeding of the 5,000 is a good example of just how popular he had become. So as Jesus left Jericho for the last 15 miles of the journey to Jerusalem, walking as he always did, three days before Palm Sunday, it was a large crowd who were with him. Mark 11, many people spread their clo uh, clo uh, cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the com coming kingdom of the Lord David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. This is seen as the grand finale of Jesus' ministry, a triumphant en entry with an adoring crowd, the Messiah coming to claim his inheritance, his birthright. Now, people had come from far and wide to Jerusalem for the Passover, and of course the major festivals which we celebrate this week. The nearest equivalent for us would be induction weekend in Cooperstown. Five times the number, usual number of people, all squeezed in tight, but these people were excited to be celebrating a major Jewish festival. And what a better time for Jesus to be there to announce his candidacy as Messiah. Everyone was there. Everyone who was important was there, the rich, the poor, the tall, the short, the Gentiles, the Jews, residents, visitors, pilgrims, all mixed in together. And on Palm Sunday, as the gates opened to let Jesus and his followers in, this could have been, for many, the first time they'd actually seen Jesus, because he was a, a relatively unknown prophet in Gavin. Most of them um, may have heard about him, and heard all the wonderful things he'd done, but they might never have seen him before. Matthew chapter 21, verse 10. And Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, 700 years before this event, had prophesied that the Messiah was coming to help those uh, people of the Jewish faith. So was Jew, uh, Jesus the one the Jew, Jewish people had been waiting for? That's what everybody is asking. Is he the one? Isaiah 11 says this in this beautiful passage. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Everyone is looking at Jesus and thinking, but you don't look like a Messiah. You are not on a white horse, waving a sword, ready to fight for the Jewish people with an army at his side. What the people of Jerusalem see is a man on a donkey, surrounded by crowds of unruly out-of-towns. How could he be the one that the prophet was talking about? But then they would be referring to the prophet Zechariah, who said these words, Zechariah 9, 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of the donkey. Perfect, you might think. This is him, he's riding on a colt, he's our king. Everyone begins to cheer and shout, and the disciples, put yourselves in their shoes, accompanying Jesus, think this is it. Jerusalem is going to accept our master. Jesus is going to win the hearts of all, even the religious leaders because he was at the head of a huge social 
following a number of people, just regular people, and they were really hoping that their man was going to win. A week later, of course, those enthusiastic crowds are now shouting, crucify him, preferring a political activist called Barabbas to be set free. One of the great lessons of the story of the events in the last few days of Jesus' life is just how fickle we can be as human beings. Jesus' followers and disciples who had walked with him into Jerusalem on Palm, Way, uh, Palm Sunday gave way under pressure and melted away, leaving Jesus alone to face his accusers. All too willing to give in at the first sign of serious opposition from the authorities. And the majestic entry into Jerusalem turns into the agony of Good Friday. All those crowds that had followed him deserted him. His own disciples deserted him. Peter, one of his best friends, denied him not once, but three times. The only consistent onlookers in the whole story are the religious leaders who remained consistent in their opposition to Jesus and their determination to bring his influence to an end. But despite all the fickleness of humans, all the saving faiths, the reversals and denials, despite everything and definitely the most unpredictable, unexpected outcome of all became reality. Because Jesus, reviled and potentially dismissed as a footnote in history, Jesus prevailed. Love prevailed. Faith triumphed over disaster. Because from Good Friday came Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, the innocent man condemned to die as a common criminal. The same man celebrated on Palm Sunday and reviled on Good Friday. The same man came back to life. You see, true faith unites believers. It doesn't divide them. True, deeply abiding commitment to faith will win. True Christians 2,000 years ago and true Christians today, you and I, we have faith in a man who did what he said he was going to do. He said that in three days he would rise again, and he did. The same man that called God his father and promised each of his followers a way to a relationship with God, that's the man that we have faith in. He still makes the same offer to all people over the world today, 2,000 years ago. Um, 2,000 years later, he promises to acknowledge us before God if we acknowledge him. He doesn't want a shallow commitment that can change on a dime like the people of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He doesn't want lip service which evaporates at the first sign of trouble. Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, wants a lifelong commitment, true faith, <coughs> a deep, abiding faith in each and every one of us. Now, the crowds of people walking into Jerusalem were expecting something revolutionary to happen. For some, somehow Jesus to overcome the Roman authorities, to somehow defeat the religious leaders, and somehow make their lives perfect. What they, when they didn't, they withdrew their support. That was when they made their mistake. Because Jesus is not, and was not, called to live up to our expectations. Jesus is and was called to live up to God's expectations. That is exactly why he was there, and that is why when Peter said, let's not go to Jerusalem, he turned around and said, get thee behind me, Satan. This is where I need to be. So Jesus was obedient to his Father's will. God has a plan for mankind. We have lived through some of the most challenging months of our life in the past year, and I remain convicted that God is using this time to remind us what it means to truly depend on him. Not lip service, not just a nominal nod of the head to his existence. No, we need to truly depend and lean into God as the refuge and stronghold that he represents to each and every one of us. As we say together each week in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done. But as human beings, what do we want really to say? My will be done. Done. Over the past year, we have realized as a country that we are vulnerable, that paperwork is just that, paperwork, that promises can be empty, that human beings all fall short, you and I included. But God, God put into motion the events of Holy Week. He gave people every opportunity to get it right. 
to acknowledge his precious son, to begin a spiritual revolution that would have changed the course of history forever. If everyone had accepted Jesus that day, imagine what it would be like today. But, of course, that did not happen because the true nature of faith is to step into the unknown and to trust that God is in charge. But that is not what happened that day. We insist on doing things our way. We pout and we whine when we can't seem to get what we want when we want it. But no, we're called for total obedience to the will of God, as demonstrated by Jesus himself, who gave his life because it was the will of his Father in heaven. On Easter Sunday, the most unexpected, the most miraculous event took place. Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Man, came back to life. Who could possibly have expected that? From the depths of despair came the rays of light. From death came life. And it all began on Palm Sunday when a man riding on a donkey entered the gates of Jerusalem and acknowledged the crowds as they shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he in the coming kingdom of our father David and Hosanna in the highest heaven. This Palm Sunday, today, let us pledge our commitment to Jesus. Let it be a deep, abiding commitment that will not evaporate into the night sky of Monday Thursday. Let our love for Jesus and for God swim against the human tide, crying, crucify him. Let us mourn the fate of mankind who missed the opportunity to affirm and acknowledge the Son of God, and in doing so, sent an innocent man to his death. death. 2,000 years. Look around us today. We are still swimming against the tide when we insist on love and not hate. We are living in a society that is anxious, stressed, and vulnerable, that more than ever need to hear the words of comfort that Jesus offered to all. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My soap yoke is easy and my burden is light. The man who rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and invites each of us today to call him Lord, friend, and savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to make a difference in our lives, to help us to see the world through your eyes so that we can help make a difference in the lives of those we need. We thank you for your son who entered Jerusalem as an innocent man worthy of our allegiance who went to the cross, rejected by all. This Easter, may we celebrate his arrival back to life in our hearts and never cease to sing his praise and feel his presence in our hearts and lives. In the precious name of our Saviour, the Messiah, and the Son of God, Jesus Christ, Lord, Friend, and Saviour. Amen. I'm going to invite Becky to come forward and lead us in prayer this morning. Thank you, Becky. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Almighty God, on this day your son Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. This morning we praise you, Heavenly Father, for all for your all-efficient grace, which makes it possible for us to proclaim Christ as our Lord and Savior. We give our allegiance to the King of Kings, the Messiah, the Chosen One, as foretold by the prophets of the Old Testament, whose footsteps led him into the city of Jerusalem and onwards to the cross. Together, as children of God, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that in this coming Holy Week, our hearts and souls will be impacted by the events that unfold. We pray that we, like Jesus Christ, will journey from the darkness of Good Friday to the light and joy of Easter Sunday. There are those in our congregation whose name, who's known to us 
and some only known to you, who are struggling now with emotional, physical, and spiritual challenges. We pray this morning for health care workers, first responders, seniors, all involved with vaccination distribution and those receiving vaccinations. Keith Bischoff, Ann Morton, Corey Perrault, Alice Deegan, Jane Allen, Casey Ives, Bob and Glenda Moore, Liz Sellers, Mary Leah Grandy, Richard Hines, Stephanie Bomar, Melani Melosi, Melanie Melosi, Andy Zimmer, Jeff Eggleston, the family of Jill Accordo, Accordino, Tom Brigham, Pat Lord, Brad Brooks, Patsy and Steve Lyon, David Thorne, the United Methodist Church of Goshen, Alabama, totally destroyed by a tornado. We ask that all may feel your loving presence. Together as children of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, ever present since the beginning of time, be with us, we pray. We seek your guidance in our lives. We seek your wisdom for our future. We seek your inspiration. In a world of turmoil, we humbly ask for peace in our hearts and in the hearts of those we love. We come before you as children, childlike, in trust, and ever mindful of the daily miracles you place in our day. Be with us always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together, as children of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay. I'll say together the love of the prayer. I'll say the choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us say now the words of our closing prayer. Almighty God, we pray on this Palm Sunday, <coughs> Jesus enter into our lives as he entered into Jerusalem, to words of welcome and praise. May the power of Christ dwell within us, overturn our wrongdoings as Jesus overturned the money changers' tables, wither our selfishness as Jesus withered the fig tree that bore no fruit. Bring us forth into the light of your love, cleansed and repentant, ready to celebrate our risen Lord on Easter Sunday. Amen. And our final hymn is a wonderful um, commitment to God. All glory, Lord, and honor.
finally, the Irish blessing. Thank you.